Hello and welcome back to another video on the Powered Armoured Exoskeleton Project which for anyone new to the channel what I've been trying to do is build my own suit of power armour if you will a powered armoured exoskeleton one that could actually be used in combat scenarios actually by military and other security personnel and we're now on what is pretty much the fifth prototype this has a full carbon fibre exoskeleton and has a composite armour bonded onto the top of it and soon we'll have my own design of electronic actuators attached to it to assist the user in movement. And as I've finally got far enough with this prototype to have it stood up like you can see here in a presentable manner, I thought I'd go over it and show the difference in quality between this one and the previous prototype that you can see behind me. However, before we go any further, as I am in the UK and not the land of the free, I do have to have a little bit of a disclaimer and state there are no weapons or anything on this thing. And I have even tried to go down the fully legit road of this and get onto funding programs like the Defence and Security Accelerator. But what became apparent to me when I was trying to get onto these different funding programs is they weren't interested in me as an individual trying to innovate something from scratch. They only appeared to want to deal with academia or a well-established company. So my best opportunity to push this thing or anything I do in the future is to gain status and notoriety on a platform like YouTube. So if you all wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would be a great deal for me. With that said, we'll take a look at the arms on the suit first and go from there. Of which I thought we would start off with the forearm as it's the easiest way to compare quality between this and the older version so we can see how the actuators are going to fit nicely in between. The overall quality of finish is pretty good, there's still some paint work to finish but we do have a bit of a logo and nice emblem on it. And then we do have this nice flat piece for an attachment point for the fist extension. Which I'm yet to make out of strong enough materials, but you can see here how it'll fit on nice. And that isn't actually to hit anything with, it's so that when you fall over, you don't break your wrists. Whereas if we compare the quality of the old one, the thing is all of this suit was basically all handmade and formed and then had to be cut down and modified so many times, you can see how bad the finish ended up being. And in general, if we look all over it, you can see none of it's flat, none of it's uniform, and none of it's symmetrical. The whole thing is rough altogether, which is just how it kind of ended up being, because on this prototype, I was really learning how to build everything so it fits around the human skeleton properly. Whereas with this one, I've been able to get a much better finish doing a lot more in CAD. Moving on to the upper arms, I'm pretty pleased how these have turned out in general. I can't think of a better way to do these shoulders. These look very simple and everything, but I've made them so you can essentially have skid plates mounted on to these pauldrons. Because when you have this width increase, whenever you're walking down a hallway or something, you are going to end up scraping the sides on the walls, etc. Possibly through doorways. But these allow a good amount of side protection. You've actually got double thickness of armour on these points here. Which, with the arms raised, nicely protect the side of the chest. Which is a pretty vulnerable position if you don't have a pauldron like this. However, regular viewers might have been expecting this video a while ago, and frankly, so was I. However, I did have some problems along the way, which we'll get into now, moving around to the inside. In the previous videos, I came to the conclusion that I would need about a one millimetre layer of steel on the inside of this, just as a thin plate, that would basically catch any amount of small amounts of shrapnel that come through the ceramic. And the problem I've had with this is because I couldn't get my own pieces of ceramic kiln fired that I was making with 3D printed moulds so that all the pieces of ceramic would layer into the casings all perfectly, millimetre perfect, because I couldn't do that, it's all like a couple of millimetres out in depth because I had to literally hand cut and lay my own ceramic tiles into them. The problem with that is if you're just a few mil out in depth, when it's over a curve, you end up with quite an overhang and nothing quite lines up. And the plan was, with this thin sheet of steel that would be on the inside of here, I would then weld nuts to the steel to act as the attachment points for all of the carbon fibre on the exoskeleton. And due to the fact there's about 150 bolt holes on this thing, I really don't want to get that wrong after all of the time it'll take to spot weld all of these nuts in. So I've decided to 3D print this in a layer to make sure it's going to fit right and so I can alter it in CAD, which was a good idea because each panel has ended up being five to 10 millimeters out on the corners, which then means the bolt holes are in the right place. 
So I will have to come back to that at a later date, but using this method with 3D print and T-nuts will allow me to test everything and make sure I've got it all right. Also, a little point to note for this video, because I don't know if it's going to come across or not, all this carbon fibre of the exoskeleton kind of looks like it's sagging. The only problem is right now is as it sits on the frame, it is all leaning forward. For example, we also have this big gap in the neck here, which doesn't really exist the same when it's actually worn. But that at least lines us up nicely for the next part, which is the chest and the helmet. I'll start with the helmet as it'll be brief. This helmet, as you can probably tell on camera, isn't the finished version, or at least not finished built, as in it doesn't have any armour in it yet. I have done countless versions and designs of different helmets of what I think would work and what I think that doesn't. Something I actually found quite difficult to do is model it all in CAD and then print it out and have it actually look how you think it looks on the computer screen. So I've actually took a base 3D print of a helmet and then formed this over the top of it. This is a shape that I'll be able to manufacture and produce easily. It's simple enough and provides great visibility. I've tried different styles of visors and eyelets and all the rest of it. And I always end up coming back to something that looks basically like an ODST helmet. So if anything, I've just led into that. But I'll probably talk about that more in a future video. Onto the chest plate, this is something I managed to get a much better finish on than the old version. There is some mould lines still because I had to 3D print it in multiple parts. I'll be aiming to fill and complete that before we're done. We've got a molly plate down in the middle here. That can be made bigger if necessary. But I've also got these Velcro straps which hold the chest plate on. My idea with those straps is still to have molly attachment points on the straps themselves so you can attach magazines, pouches, etc. Something that I have found works really well is if you print this kind of a pattern onto the Velcro strap, so the uh, adhesive Velcro with this thick and thin kind of tank track like solid structure that is then attached to the Velcro, you get an incredibly strong strap that is actually quite difficult to remove and very, very strong. For the attachment points at the top, I've got this system here where basically the chest plate slots down on top of these brackets and then you attach the velcro on at the bottom these are just cable tied together because it's extremely difficult to put all this on this standing frame i did not design this whole system to be stood up more to be laid down in the back of vehicles when someone isn't wearing it but this is the best system i found because if you have this as a hinge the difficulty to get all of this to work without it sagging without it falling apart is incredibly hard and it actually just makes it really difficult to physically put on yourself when it's hinged because you've got to lift this plate above your head and then put it down when you're actually in the exoskeleton. So I do think this system works way better. We've also got some little attachment points here and here for any form of gorget that might want to be added in the future. Something I'm going to investigate with this chest plate in the next video is whether I can have a molly plate carrier underneath it. Now, I've always made this chest plate big enough to have another layer of armour behind it to get a higher amount of protection. As my goal with this suit, with the quality of materials that I can basically afford, I want to get the, all of the armour protection basically to stop something like a 556. Which I'm confident with the testing I've been able to do, that's what this armour will be capable of when complete. But nowadays, standard 556 isn't particularly at a high level. The idea of this is also if I can get higher quality of materials in the future then I'll be able to instantly increase that protection level without changing any of the design. But I've had a thought recently, can I just wear a molly plate carry underneath there that also adds the protection but then I can actually modify the back of the plate carrier to attach to the exoskeleton which should actually increase the comfort and how well the exoskeleton fits you on the torso side. So that should be in a near future video where I'm actually going to try this suit on and test out the movement. And moving on to the legs, which we also have quite a big quality increase. There is still the odd mold line in there, but compared to the old prototype, a vast improvement. It all fits pretty neatly around where the actuator is going to sit. I have actually decreased armour thickness a little bit around the ankles because I think it's just kind of a waste. And it feels horrendous having extra weight at the end of the limb. There will also be some rubber pads added to the shins to prevent scraping through the armour casing. And we've also got another litany of attachment points on the side of the thigh for whatever required. 
And while we're here, I thought I'd better cover the elephant in the room, which is this big hole in the middle here. Now, this will be covered in the future with basically kind of like a brigadine uh, cloak skirt affair that overlaps in the middle and wraps around the back as there is no back of the leg armour. I found that on the previous prototype, it was basically pointless and useless and just kept eating too much. However, I need to put this on, wear it, so that I know where to lace in the ceramic into this cloak affair that's going to be attached around the waist. So I'll at least be able to find that out in the upcoming video. Oh, and I nearly forgot I have weighed all this off before putting it on the frame, and it's currently sitting at about 51 kilos. By the time it has the added extra bits of armour to it and the batteries, the actuators added and this helmet actually made out of the correct materials, I reckon we're going to be sitting at about 75 kilos all in and done, which is about roughly what I expect it to be. It'd always be nicer to make it a bit less weight, but really, I think it's about right. And that about brings us to the end of the presentation on this new prototype. To regular viewers, I apologise for not posting in a while. Between some car expenses and my CNC machine actually breaking, I've been quite delayed. I have managed to get some progress out of my own actuators, this being a drone version, because once I've done with this, I want to move on to some drones. But I'm really trying to put as much effort into this as I can and getting it right, particularly with reducing the amount of electronics involved specifically electronics that might have Campbell data packets running down them because all I see in the future is an increased amount of electronic warfare so it'd be no good if these could just be turned off when fitted to the suit. I mean you can just look at what happened in Venezuela recently with the astounding US Special Forces just turning off the lights in the city as well as jamming various communications. But I am making progress. Something I've found with these is when you try to reduce the amount of electronics involved and naturally increase in some mechanical complexity, the tolerances involved all shrink and everything has to work a lot tighter together to get it to work. But that's not far off, so thank you very much for sticking with it and I hope to see you on the next video. And last of all, have a great day.